Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high-value home theater and audio equipment. And today, we're talking about the Emotiva T1 Plus and the C1 Plus. It's a center channel and some tower speakers. Okay, so grab a cup of coffee, sit down, and let's talk about the Emotiva T1 Plus and C1 Plus. Today's sponsor is Falcon Chicken Hawk Audiophile Light Bulbs. When you want to make sure that all of your music is illuminated the audiophile way, uh, grab one of Falcon Chicken Hawk's Audiophile Light Bulbs, now available in LED, $77 a piece. Okay, for one. One light bulb. The Emotiva T1 Plus. It's a three-way spe tower speaker with uh, four drivers. You might not be able to see them. There's one down here. Yep, one right here. I'm not gonna do that to this one, but it does have a real phase plug, real phase plug. And then a ribbon a tweeter. They sell for $700 a pair. That's not per speaker, that's a pair. They have a 25 millimeter by 32 millimeter tweeter, followed by a five and a quarter inch woven fiber woven i sometimes say woven woven fiber mid-range driver again with a real phase plug and then it has two six inch woven fiber bass drivers their frequency response is 37 hertz up to 28,000 hertz or 28k uh, they're rated at four ohm nominal impedance and they're 88 db sensitive and remember sensitivity just means how loud a speaker plays at the same power so the higher efficiency a speaker is the louder it's going to play at the same power level it has a huge port on the back and it is bi ampable or bi wireable and it has four outrigger style feet and it also comes with some spikes if you'd like to screw them into the outrigger style feet and then mount them. I wouldn't recommend that on wood floors though. Maybe, you, you can do it if you don't care about the floor. Imaging and sound stage. So, I have had the Emotiva T0s in here, the T2 Plus, which, so the T0s are like the T1 Pluses, little brother. The T2 Plus is like the T1 Pluses, bigger brother. And they've all imaged and sound staged well, depending upon where they're at in the room. As far as lateral imaging and soundstage, they're fantastic. Nothing short of remarkable. And oftentimes, or I used to, I never used to use a center channel because I really didn't feel the need for one. But center imaging is great. And a lot of times when I would do a review of one of the Emotivas, I would have to check to make sure that the center channel was even on. And it wasn't. So, Blade Runner 2049, stuff was coming from way outside the speakers. Voices, and this is when I wasn't listening with a center channel. Voices would go uh, locked in the middle and then they would move from left to right. I always took, I don't know, some weird sense of pride that I didn't run a center channel. Now there's some mixes on certain, well, certain networks and channels Netflix sometimes have has I wouldn't say they're poorly mixed but they have a lean in type of mix which means the ambient noise is often louder than the voices so in order to hear the voices I would always have to turn it up but then when a car would explode or a helicopter would crash or something it would be a bit much that's why I started using, and I used to use a center channel, okay? I've been, I've been interested in home theater and actually bought my first home theater receiver back in the, I guess it was late 90s. So I've been into home theater and I've always had a system well, 20 plus years. But recently I've, oh, I don't need a center channel speaker. But then when I try to watch something and I didn't have a center channel speaker, there would be a whole bunch of craziness and reaching for the remote to turn it down if I was watching something late at night because to hear the voices I had to 
turn up everything. So it also works the opposite way. My wife and I like to watch West Wing, and West Wing's a old TV show, okay? Anyway, the way that that one's mixed, it's all dialogue, and there's not a lot of dynamicism. So there's not a lot of low end, and there's not a lot of top, top end. It's just all in the middle. It can be a bit harsh. So without a center channel, it can just get on you. Enter the center channel. Enter the center channel. Uh, the Emotiva C1 Plus center channel. With a center channel and a way to control the level of said center channel, i.e. a receiver, you're going to need a receiver for your center channel. I mean, you can hook it up to a two-channel um, amplifier. I don't know what type of results you're going to get. Anyway, with a center channel, I can mitigate the lean-in type of movie soundtracks, which when something explodes, I don't mess my trousers. So I can bring the dialogue up because center channels handle almost all dialogue. So I can bring the center channel level up and guess what? Now everything's a little bit more balanced and I'm not freaking out when a robot kills another robot, even though the robots aren't alive. Conversely, I can turn down the center channel when I'm watching West Wing and it's just grating because it's so loud and harsh. I can bring that center channel down and now when they're bebopping around the White House, it doesn't feel like I want to poke my eardrum out with the pencil. Getting back to soundstage for the T1 Pluses. So soundstage is where the instruments feel like they're at, how wide and everything, where, where it's at associated to the speakers. A lot of times you can pull speakers way out into the room and the soundstage will kind of go back behind and be very large and everything. It feels like everybody's in place and you can hear the singer and the guitarist and the drums. So with a ribbon tweeter, oftentimes, if one pulls a speaker out into the room that has a ribbon tweeter, that soundstage can start to collapse. And when it collapses, it's when there's cymbal crashes or high percussion or anything to do that is putting the tweeter on display, a lot of times that can come really far forward when the rest of the band is out here. So you can have the drummer in the back, you know, just going to town and then bam, he hits a cymbal and all of a sudden the cymbal's right here. So for people that are really into the speakers disappearing, and that's when everything, you, it doesn't feel like the music's coming from a speaker anymore. For people that that is really high up on their priority list, a ribbon tweeter in a speaker may not be the way to go. However, when I got these closer to the wall within about two feet, the sound stage kind of stayed in line. It didn't give me as an immersive experience as I've heard with other speakers that have pulled way out into the room or three or four feet into the room and they've disappeared and there's everything back there. But I'm not trying to tell you not to consider these speakers because when they're closer to a wall and that sound stage isn't so far deep, it, it's all in line, okay? Just bear in mind though, if you are one that wants to pull the speakers out into the room, as soon as some of those symbols come, that, that sound stage is going to not break down, but stuff is gonna be right up forward. And it's not just this speaker. There's other speakers that have the same phenomena when it comes to sound stage and imaging. Enter the center channel. The C1 Plus is a three-way sealed center channel it has the same tweeter which is 25 by 32 millimeter ribbon folded ribbon tweeter it has a three inch mid-range driver with a real face plug okay real face plug means it's just not a dust cover so the face plug is stationary and the and the driver actually it moves around it then it has two five and a quarter inch woven fiber base drivers sealed let's talk about sealed Many center channels that I have are ported or have had in for review or own personally are ported. So in some instances, not everybody has a perfect room. In my bedroom, for example, there's an alcove, which means it's kind of, it's almost like this. So the speakers kind of go in front of 
a boundary that's pushing the sound out forward. Now every boundary will do that, but in an alcove it can be exaggerated. So I have noticed on some center channel speakers that are rear ported, I get a nasty resonance and it's generally in the mid range, upper mid range. So to mitigate that, I would oftentimes or all the time have to plug the port. You can plug the port with a variety of things, including a rolled up pair of socks or an unused diaper that's rolled up just right and put in there. Anyway, that reduces the resonance. It doesn't eliminate it, but it reduces the resonance. The great thing about having a sealed center channel is I'm not dealing with those resonances anymore in that alcove that can do that. Even though this is a sealed enclosure, the bass response is, goes all the way down to 50, 50 hertz, all the way up to 28K, which makes sense because it's the same tweeter. These are also four ohm speakers and they have a sensitivity of 89 dB. So a little bit different sensitivity, but you run your room correction or whatever, and it, it doesn't even matter. You're probably gonna be controlling the levels anyway just in case and that's the thing you can't just set your center channel level and then just be done with it because everything is mixed differently some movies are going to be great some movies are going to have that lean in dialogue to really get you into the action some tv shows are going to be screeching so i find myself having to move and adjust the center channel often so it's not just set it and forget it and you're done forever it depends on how the movie was mixed or how the television show was mixed. But if you don't have a center channel, you're not adjusting anything and you get what you get. Center imaging on this center channel is incredible. I'm just kidding. Of course it's incredible. It's in the center. It's only coming from one source. So yes, it's incredible. That was a joke. All right. From a sound perspective, the dialogue is crisp. It's intelligible. It's wonderful. There's enough body in here that it doesn't make it sound unrealistic. And some speakers that I've used, now granted, they weren't a dedicated center channel, but some very revealing speakers that I've used can have a tendency to sound unrealistic with dialogue, especially if it isn't mixed well. I, I wasn't super worried because Emotivo has always done a great job on everything, but that was something I was interested to see if I was going to hear is the dialogue going to be too crisp too clear that it feels like it's somewhat separated from the rest of the mix good news is it does not it is just clear awesome full okay so with the mid bass driver and the two woofers it still provides a bunch of body the dialogue may seem a little bit unrealistic unreal just from the sense that it's actually clear and one can hear it but it doesn't seem so unrealistic that it seems like it's separated from the rest of the mix wonderful wonderful center channel frankly this center channel i'm going to do a video about an affordable home theater setup and i'm going to recommend this center channel for that setup even if you don't have matching front speakers and i know people oh my goodness you have to have voice timber matched whatever front channel speakers okay yes in theory you do you should in practice though i have run different center channels and different front speakers and never really had that big of an issue but what i would say is you want to anchor your system around an awesome center channel and at 250 dollars, this is not out of line for a center channel so i would recommend if you're at all interested in building out a home theater system and you don't have a bunch of money to put out right now you have another pair of bookshelves laying around or even a pair of towers laying around it but you want to get into home theater buy the c1 plus okay just start off with the c1 plus you can build around it later but i'm telling you this is the best center channel speaker i have ever heard most of my videos are about two channel listening or 2.1 channel listening, music first listening. I have listened to music through what's called Dolby, Dolby Audio on my receiver, and it's been amazing. With that said, it can be sometimes difficult to dial in that center channel to get it just balanced right where it seems believable, but once you get it right, it's pretty outstanding these three speakers right here so for less than a thousand dollars you can get three speakers that can 
absolutely be an end game home theater front center right and left speaker setup it can anchor your system and i don't think you can do much better even at multiples of this price it's fantastic let's talk about bass okay switching back to music a little bit 37 hertz is very low and when i'm listening to music i don't need a sub you don't need a sub with these the thing about this speaker is the bass is balanced enough with the rest of the frequency range that it doesn't seem too big and i've had that experience with some towers even in a really large room the way that speaker is voiced is there's just so much bass that it can detract from the mid-range and the treble the good news here is this bass is balanced with the rest of the frequency range it's also rolled off very well so Intergalactic by the Beastie Boys has a very smooth roll off. So, and since this hits 37, it you get a very big idea of how deep that song goes because that song goes down, I think into the low 30s, if not the high 20s. With this speaker, I didn't feel like, oh my gosh, I'm missing so much of the frequency range. It was awesome. With that said, there is a little bit of a boost. Highway to Hell by ACDC. This speaker was south of neutral as far as it provided a little bit more thickness in the bass drum. And again, that's fine. Most speakers, when they're boosted, when they're boosted around that 80, 90, 100 hertz, maybe 70 hertz area, it doesn't seem like it, it's not detracting from the rest of the music. And what it's doing is it's giving you a little bit of an extra punch, which to most people sounds awesome. Unless you're like the most ardent, crazy, the music's gotta be exactly how it was recorded. And who knows how the music was recorded anyway. Was anybody actually at the recording? No. So unless somebody just really wants that extreme neutrality, the bass on this is gonna be just fine for most people. And with music, I don't think you need a subwoofer. Even with movies, I don't think you really need a subwoofer. Now, is it going to be is, is it going to be earth shattering, shaking? Some, sometimes it is. And actually, I felt my seat shaken a little bit. If you're watching home theater, if you're into home theater, then you're probably going to want a subwoofer. But again, here's a value proposition for you. If you're just getting into home theater, don't worry about a sub right now because these, while they're not going to extend all the way down to 20 hertz, they're going to give you enough bass to get by. So if you don't have the sub, or you're going to compromise on what sub you want and not get these, get these, don't even worry about a sub, save up some money and then get the sub you want later. Because you're not gonna feel like you're not getting the immersive experience out of a movie, even though, the, even though these only hit down to 37. And still, they roll off really smooth. And if you want more bass, just shove them even closer to the wall. Point being is these make a lot of bass. It is not the most nuanced, textured bass in the world with upright bass and things like that. But at $700 for a pair, this bass is more than one could ever ask for. Texture, tone, clarity, things like that. Yes, I've heard speakers that do better. But those are also out of sometimes bookshelf speakers that cost more than this thing. So... From a bass volume standpoint, you're getting just the right amount. It's not too much. It's not too little. You can get this and still not feel like you have to run out and get a subwoofer, okay? This is a great speaker. And another thing, since these do image so well, if you don't have the money to get a center channel and you're going to save up for the C1 Plus later at $250, you don't need a center channel. Bear in mind though, as the music, as the movies, as the mix changes, you may be blown away by having the speaker at a level that you can understand dialogue and then all of a sudden having a bunch of, of you know, robots in, infiltrating and trying to kill the, off the human race or something like that, okay? Or it could be so searing and icky and harsh that it's just too much for you as well. So you can get away without a center. You can also get away without a sub. Long term though, for home theater, you're gonna want probably both a sub and a center. But if you have to make one compromise, get these three 
and then worry about the sub later. Let's talk about mid-range. So there's an emphasis on clarity in the speaker and most folded ribbon or AMT tweeters have a certain sound and that sound usually lends itself to extreme amounts of detail and clarity. Mid-range on this speaker is obviously very clear female vocals are amazing hello by adele her voice was very detailed very articulate sometimes with an amt tweeter though it can lack a bit of body the good news here is there's not a lack of body in her voice while adele's voice is not as smoky as i've heard on other speakers those other speakers don't have the amount of detail and i would gladly trade a bit of smoky mysterious nature to her voice to a hyper detailed presentation of her voice while still sounding believable acoustic guitars are just as detailed as the voices are the redemption song by bob marley the first time i ever heard an emotiva speaker redemption song by bob marley uh i i had a a, a strong reaction to that song it was I'd never heard that song presented in a way. I'd never heard that much detail before. And the T1 Pluses do just as good of a job as the little tiny B1 Pluses, but it brings up so much more mid-range. It brings up so much more body. And now you have Bob Marley not only blowing my mind from the detail and the acoustic guitar in his voice, but just the overall volume and the body of what's going on in the mid-range is, is brought up, and it's just wonderful. Rooster by Allison Chains off the MTV Unplugged record. There is a harmony between Lane Staley and Jerry Cantrell. Sometimes on speakers that don't handle mid-range and don't have the amount of detail in the mid-range as the T1 Pluses have, there is a, just a combination, amalgamation of those two voices to it. It sounds like one voice and you can kind of hear a little bit of a difference, but there was a level of separation and differentiation between those voices that was truly remarkable. You could definitely hear Lane and you can definitely hear Jerry. We're on, we're on first name basis over here at the Cheap Audio Man. Anyway, you could definitely hear two different voices. Remarkable, awesome, great. Maybe a slight recess in the mid-range here, maybe a bit of a U-shaped speaker, but it's not so low that it doesn't seem believable and incredible. And unless somebody wants a really mid-forward speaker, this is going to check all the boxes that you have. It's thick enough that it doesn't feel recessed, and unless you have the tweeters aimed directly at your ears, there's no fatigue going on here, no harsh harshness in the upper mid-range. It's very well done. Again, placement, you probably don't want these towed directly in at your ears. I had these almost towed directly out into the room with just a bit of a toe in. If you have them aimed directly at your ears, it's probably not gonna be listened to it for long listening periods. Have it directly out in the room, you're probably gonna be fine. Let's talk about treble. One of my favorite things about Emotiva speakers has everything to do with their tweeter, and that's saying a lot because I like a lot of things about Emotiva speakers. The way that they implement the tweeter is it gives you a hyper amounts of detail and clarity while still feeling somewhat realistic. When I say somewhat, I mean, I yes, I could pick out the difference between a hi-hat in the room, a real hi-hat in the room, and this speaker but it's not done in such a way that it is unpleasant and offensive. It is awesome. And while it doesn't seem hyper realistic, the hyper amounts of detail is like a microscope into the music. And I'll trade that. I'll trade the realism into a microscope and hearing my music and frankly movies in a way that I've never heard before. And that's one of the greatest things that I love about this hobby is listening to songs that I've heard a hundred times, or maybe probably, I probably never listened to a song a thousand times. Either way, listening to songs that I'm so familiar with and hearing details and hearing differences in the song or the movie, an extra bit of detail, it's like getting free music. So I love these speakers because of that. Percussion, cymbals, 
air, all the MTV, most live records that you're going to hear, you're going to hear a sense of space or he feel. You're going to feel a sense of space that most tweeters can't produce. With the folded ribbon, it's, again, it's wonderful. And if you haven't had a chance to hear a folded ribbon tweeter that's implemented well as it is on the T1 Plus, I would highly recommend it. It is definitely a different sound and there's enough differences that it presents the music in a way that is refreshing and awesome. What are my final thoughts? Final thoughts. At $700, I think the T1 Pluses from Emotiva are unrivaled. There is a $600 pair of speakers from Fluence, the Fluence reference speakers. They have an eight inch down firing woofer as well as two six and a half inch drivers and then one inch soft dome tweeter. Anyway, I think these are better. I think these are better because the Fluence has a ton of bass and you're not turning that bass down. And I listened to the Fluence in a very large room and the bass was really covering up a lot of mids and just didn't feel balanced. This speaker feels balanced. I don't know of any other speaker in this price category that comes even close to the T1 Plus. These aren't neutral. There's a bit of a rise in the bass and a bit of extension on the top end that, that feels a little bit boosted up. The mid-range aren't recessed enough to be offensive, but they're not neutral and I'm glad they're not. This is a fun, dynamic, awesome speaker and it's lively without being fatiguing depending on placement. This is a great value. And while the T1 Pluses may be slightly less impressive than their bigger brother, the T2 Pluses, I think the T2 Pluses are the right speaker for some people. I think the T1 Pluses are the right speaker for most people because this is a versatile speaker. You can get away with this speaker in a, in a smaller room. You can get away with this speaker in a very large room where the T2 Pluses, they're only going to be really fit for a larger room. These can do both. The styling and the looks of the speaker are a bit polarizing because it comes in any color as long as it's black and it comes in any design as long as it's this design with the cool angles and stuff like that. I think it's refreshing. I think Emotiva does it one way, they do it their way and they lean into it and they don't make any apologies. And for that, I love it. Some people aren't gonna like it and that's fine, but it is what it is and you get what you get. Personally, I think it's cool. Unless one requires the utmost in neutrality and a complete disappearing act when it comes to soundstage and imaging, the T1 Plus is the most versatile tower speaker I have ever heard and frankly would be my choice even over its bigger brother, the T2 Plus. Highest recommendation. If you have room for towers, this is easy recommendation. Probably the best thing it is well, the T2 Pluses are under a grand, right? But they're not gonna be right for every room. This, the T, T1 Plus, fantastic speaker, one of the best values in hi-fi right now. $700 for a pair of tower speakers that are built well, sound phenomenal, home theater, music, get away without a sub, it, incredible. Get away without a center speaker, but you can get the center speaker. If you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio. And every Sunday night, we have patron only Zooms. We also have a patron only Facebook group. You can also sign up for Amazon Music. Click on the link. You get three months for free. I think you get three months of Disney Plus for free, which you can watch a bunch of cool movies now in your home theater setup. And I get a couple of dollars. You can also use the links. I do have an affiliate relationship with Emotiva, which means if you buy the T1 Pluses or the C1 Plus, I will get a commission. So don't binge watch anything. You can now, you can binge watch stuff through your home theater. You can watch some Blade Runner 2049 or Ghoulies or whatever it is you wanna watch. And you can watch it and you can listen to music and then you can fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy, I'm the Cheap Audio Man.